اهلا بيكم معانا في الحلقه الاخيره من سلسله الموكس احنا النهارده في مكتب بروفيسور سنجاي سارما وهو بروفيسور اوف ميكانيكال انجينيرنج ودايركتور اوف ديجيتال ليرنينج وذا بريزيدنت اوف ام اي تي اكس وهو وافق ان هو يعمل معانا اكسكلوسيف انترفيو لتحرير اكاديمي Thanks very much for having us today. It's a great pleasure. Um, so before diving into the questions, how about if you give us a very brief introduction uh, to MITx for Tahrir Academy viewers? Sure, thank you. So MITx uh, is like Disney. We make the massive open online courses. edX is the platform. They're like the theater where you play the courses. Mm -hmm. uh, MITx, Harvard X, Caltech X, these are the producers of the massive open online courses. Mm -hmm. MITx today consists of about 15 people, direct employees, and maybe about 100 people working indirectly with MITx to produce about uh, 25 courses by the end of this coming spring mm -hmm. uh, for uh, edX, and maybe about 40 courses for campus. Great. Great. So we have received questions from Tahrir Academy viewers and we have grouped them into five main groups. Um, I'll start with the first one and it, it's about the uh, universities, the elite universities in particular and MOOCs. So people are wondering um, why elite institutions and MIT is included, of course, that are most selective in their admission criteria are the ones who took the lead into developing MOOCs. Well, you know, um, th there are many reasons for it, but I'll give you one reason. One reason is that the elite universities, uh, uh, I'm not even sure I particularly like the term elite. I will say that the universities that are very driven and have world ambitions, the university you're a part of, um, we, uh, our primary target is actually our students. Mm -hmm. And what we're using online tools to do is improve the education of our students. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, because our students are great, like you, right, and we want to make them spectacular, if you use online tools, we can give them knowledge uh, in a way that is very effective. Mm -hmm. And then we can use class time to really do practical things and really embed the knowledge okay. in their brains so that they become, like, you know, really powerful with their knowledge. Mm -hmm. If we develop the online tools, why not share it with the world? Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. Okay. So the elite schools, as you call it, the the more the top schools. What we're doing is we're trying to help our students. Okay. And we're just in like in a lot of things, we're just moving first. Okay. So a related question: uh, Are MOOCs perceived as the future of education, or are they merely a tool for strengthening the reputation of the academic institution? Uh, first of all, m m let's separate the word MOOC from online courseware. Mm -hmm. What we're really doing is online courseware, because with online courseware, we can flip the classroom. Okay. What that means is students can view material online, mm -hmm. master it, and in the classroom, they can gain practical mastery. Okay. Discussions, labs, building things, projects, etc., etc., field work, right? So it's online tools that really is the focus. Yes, I do believe that online tools are the future of education. MOOCs are just an outcome of that. Okay. So MOOCs are not the future of education. Online courses are. Especially blended online courses, mm -hmm. in my view, are the future of education. I see. MOOCs are a way to then make these things available to thousands of people. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So from the institution's point of view, it's for efficient use of the student time. It is to make sure that our students are able to watch the material, rewind, make sure they are really understand it, and come into the classroom as prepared as possible so that the time in the classroom mm -hmm. is elevated so that we can do more advanced things, more fun things, more useful things. That's okay. the real reason. Okay. Um, so we'll move into the second part of the questions and it's about the future of MOOCs. Um, do you look at them as a disruptive innovation that will uh, replace the traditional on-campus education at some point? I actually don't think they'll replace uh, on campus education. Um, MOOCs are like sugar that you put inside coffee. They make the coffee better, right? If you have a great university, and for example, there are many wonderful universities uh, in, in Egypt, what you do in campus, when you talk to your professors, when you talk to your peers, when you do experiments, when you build something, when you have a coffee and just discuss something unrelated to academia, is it's a fundamental part of education, broadening of the mind, growing up, 
uh, immersing yourself in knowledge, uh, intellectualism. There's some really amazing stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. Online is not intended to replace that. Online is intended to create more time for that. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it, it complements. It's a complement. Okay. Unfortunately, that's a very subtle point that's getting lost because everyone talks about the online, but the online is meant to assist what makes on-site magical. Mm -hmm. We want to increase the magic, mm -hmm. not reduce it. Now, for people who have zero access to the campus life, the online is the only thing, and that's what a MOOC is really intended for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, great. Um, so there is another important question about credit and certification. So some students ask, will I gain any college credit if I take MOOCs and how would the, an institution that I'm, I'm applying to will evaluate my um, um, credits that I took through the MOOCs? So if you could give us a hint on uh, certification and college credits, please. So uh, things like college <coughs> credit, um, these are cultural things that it takes some time to establish a culture of use, um, but it's happening. So for example, some colleges are already giving credit for online courses. Mm -hmm. Some colleges are not. So right now it's early days. Uh, MIT does not give credit, even for MIT MOOCs, mm -hmm. to its own students. Mm -hmm. Because remember what I said, to really get the MIT experience, you need the online, but you need the residential and the labs, which you don't get online. Yeah. So we're not there yet, mm -hmm. but some schools are already doing it. Now, the second thing is, it is my view that over the next couple of years, more and more companies will give a lot of value to credentials acquired online. Mm -hmm. The one channel, one, sorry, challenge, is how do you make sure that the student really took the class and didn't cheat or something like that? Mm -hmm. So for that, uh, edX, has created ID verified certificates. Mm -hmm. And that way you can prove that the student really took the material. Yeah. And once that happens, my belief is more and more companies will accept it. And over yeah. time, there will be a culture of universities accepting it. Yeah, yeah. So that leads us to the next question. Uh, we appreciate that edX is not for profit. However, from your own point of view, uh, what do you think uh, the business model is for MOOCs and are they financially viable for companies? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I foresee a world of open sourced education. What is the financial model for Linux? People contribute because they love it and they believe in it and we all use it and we all benefit from it. Mm -hmm. So similarly, uh, my personal view is that edX will be, you know, it will it'll be sustainable. They'll generate revenues because people want to use the platform, people want to take classes, there'll be certificates and so on. But in the long term, when we share assets, things become sustainable. Mm -hmm. And that is the vision behind edX. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a little bit of charge, but we're not trying to make a profit out of it. Mm -hmm. We want to do just charge just enough and just get enough contributions, both in terms of assets, such as a new course, and a little a nominal charge for certificates, such that edX sustains itself. Okay. Now, there are those who feel that MOOCs can generate billions of dollars of money, right? My view is that's not the place to start. Education is too sacred to turn to a business. And so we are going the not-for-profit route. Uh, and in the end, MIT is not-for-profit, edX is not-for-profit. Good, great. So one final question about the future of MOOCs in the Middle East. Um, do you have any insights about the level of engagement of students um, in the Middle East with edX? Yeah, we have um, a lot of students from the Middle East. Uh, Egypt actually happens to be a country from which we have a lot of students. And in fact, we've heard some very moving st stories of some of the students from Egypt who've taken online classes with edX. And some uh, recently when there were some disturbances in Egypt, uh, they, hung, they hung in there and passed the courses. Uh, when YouTube was blocked, they found another way to manage. Um, I see a lot of interest from the Middle East, especially from Egypt. And we know when you talk about an old country, a country with uh, 5,000 years, 6,000 years of history like Egypt, uh, going back to you know, uh, the pyramids, right? So we're talking about 3,500 BC. Um, my view is that there is a latent interest in knowledge and culture. Uh, and the Middle East, because it's a cradle for human civilization, 
my view, is a natural place for online assets like MOOCs uh, to find customer and to find people who enjoy it and absorb uh, its value. So d does edX uh, do any kind of promotional activities to attract more learners from the Middle East and Egypt in particular? edX uh, we're not um, we don't do much marketing okay right <laughs> any uh, future plans well we, we are working with uh, uh, the Queen Rania Foundation and others uh, to try and reach more uh, people um, in the Middle East we're also interested in translating to Arabic there's some early activity uh, ongoing uh, yes there's definitely a great deal of interest MIT also has strong connections with the Middle East so I think it's a matter of time uh, the most important reason for me personally is I want to visit Egypt. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. We'll see you next time in Egypt. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.